In this video we're going to look at how to use a line command. So the lines in AutoCAD are very important because it's everything in AutoCAD is drawn using lines or different types of lines. In things in software like Revit or other 3D modeling software you actually maybe would draw with objects but in AutoCAD you actually have to draw with lines. So all circles, all rectangles, everything is just a collection of lines. So obviously it's a very very important command. Okay, on the screen here we have our notes for the line command. I'm going to be working through these myself so you can open them up yourself and work through work alongside me. And we'll go through the different methods for, for drawing a line. And then there's a few little exercises you can work on yourselves. So I'm just going to move it onto my other screen so we can see the green over here a bit more. Okay. So there are three different ways we can actually use, use a line command. So first thing we want to do is actually find out where the line command is. So on the ribbon here, we have up the top in the draw tab, you actually have the line option here, the line icon. So you can click on the line icon. So once you click on it, you know it's activated because the command line then highlight, it comes a bit more like it was kind of transparent white before, but once, you, once the command is active, it becomes solid white and actually it comes up here saying line and, and it tells you what you want to do. So it's saying specify our first point. So again, I mentioned in the previous video that AutoCAD is like a computer program and everything has to be done at a very specific point. So when you're doing a line, always follow, or when you're doing any command, always read what it says in the command line, because that will tell you what you have to do next. So, so there's three different methods we can use for drawing a line. One is the point and click method. So again, the point and click method is basically just click randomly on screen like this. It's, you know, it's not very accurate. You can just click anywhere you want. We don't know how long the drawings are, how, or how long the lines are, sorry. So it's not very accurate. Once you're finished drawing, all you do is press enter. And you can get whatever random shape you have. Um, what I want you to do now is actually we can just practice deleting things. So there's actually an option for selecting. So this is, you're going to use this for all your, within all your commands. So if you want to delete a line, now you could. There's a few different options. You can click on this. You can click on the line. Just click on it with the mouse, and it'll highlight it. So once you see these grips, this means the line is selected. So if you want to delete it, just press delete on the keyboard, and then it disappears. And now you could do this individually, deleting each line, but that's going to take a while. So there's different ways you can actually select it. So um, if you go up to the just kind of to the top, top right corner above the drawing, so click the mouse down once, don't hold it down, just click it and hold it down. You see this little green box comes up. This basically will select anything that this green box touches will be selected and you can then delete it. So I'll just click it all, press delete. So it's all gone. And we're gonna bring that back now. So one of the most useful commands in AutoCAD, I think is the undo button. So you can either click the undo button up here, or you can press Control Z, and that'll actually undo the last command you did. So we have it here. Um, so if you drag down a box from this side, everything the green line touches will be selected. Um, there's another way you can do it. So if you go from the other side, so, so click the mouse once, don't hold it down, and drag a blue line across. So this is slightly different. So once we have overall the, if you're just using the green box, everything this within the green box would be selected. But the blue box is slightly different. It only actually selects whole objects with that, that are within it. So if I click this, you'll see this line wasn't fully in the blue box, so it wasn't selected. So again, it's just a slightly different way of selecting things. So we can press delete, and you're left with the one line that we didn't select. And I'm going to do press Control Z or the undo button up here again, just to bring it back, just to show our, our selecting again. And again, if you want to, if you've got a kind of more complex design, you want to do more of a freehand selection. You can actually press the button down, press the mouse button down. And keep it pressed down then you can actually have this kind of green kind of cloud shape and you can draw whatever shape you want if you've got something that's a strange shape and you can do the same thing if you go to the other side with the blue selection cloud so again once you've once you figured all that out just press delete and it's gone okay so back to the line command what i want to do next is we're going to so that was the point and click method we did just drawn randomly not very accurate i don't think so what we, next thing we want to do is looking at drawing straight line so our lines there are kind of a bit all over the place but usually in AutoCAD we're drawing straight lines so we're drawing houses foundations piping different construction type of drawings so generally draw lines are going to be straight so bring up the line command again again you can click on the line command up here or you can actually use a keyboard so you can actually click into the command line and press the word just type the word line and hit enter that'll actually activate the line command again or the quickest way you can do it which is quite handy I find if you just press L on the keyboard, so there's actually keyboard shortcut. So if you press L that, and just hit enter, that'll bring up the line command. So very quick. So once you have the line command active, you just click anywhere on the screen, and we'll see. We want say we want to draw a perfectly straight 
horizontal line or a perfectly vertical line it is a bit tricky you can see if you're good you might be able to kind of see how the line lines up it's kind of a bit tricky just to kind of get it exactly straight and if you move if the mouse moves any little way it's going to not be straight so a quick way to actually autocad gives us to actually draw straight lines is actually using an option color ortho option so on your keyboard if you press f8 on the keyboard now you'll see on the command line that's actually coming up saying ortho is now on and if you'll notice when you move the mouse around that the line can only go in perfectly horizontal so if you just basically start clicking anywhere on the screen the lines are only ever going to be perfectly horizontal or vertical so it's a nice way if, you want, if you're drawing straight lines it's a nice way to do it so there you go and once you're finished the command just hit enter so see this this freehand sketch is more of a kind of nice and straight line so it's a good one and um, we'll delete this one now so again we're going to use our selection tool so click the mouse to just to the right corner above the drawing and drag the cloud down over it and once you click the mouse down then we're going to press the delete button on the keyboard they're all gone okay so next way we're going to draw a line is actually using the specific length so say if we have a drawing and we know the line is going to be exactly 10 units long or 50 units long so what we can do then is click on the line command or type in line wherever you want to activate the command so i'm going to click anywhere on screen and you can see where first of all my ortho option is still on so it's nice and straight you can leave it on and leave it off doesn't matter for this example this is showing how you can draw the distance so you'll see actually on the screen it actually is telling me how long how long the line is so currently it's at 1027 units long so this could be millimeters or meters depending on what scale you're drawing so we call them meters just for the example here so this line here is going to be 1031 meters long or 1000 whatever you want to whatever units you want to do and um, but say we want to draw it exactly to 1000 units long and um, yeah we could kind of get the mouse and balance it out but like it's gone to a number of decimal points so it's very hard to get it exactly because we're not that accurate so what we can do is again in the command line is asking us to specify the next point but if we actually know the next point is going to be a thousand units long from the origin all we do is actually type in 1000 on the keyboard hit enter and then we'll see just press enter again just to end the command or press escape and now we'll see we've actually got a line that's exactly 1000 units long so we can do that again just go underneath it now we can draw another line that's maybe 500 units long just hit enter and then escape to get out of that one so you can see then so using the distance input method it's actually just a nice way to get lines exactly at a very specific length because in autocad it's all about drawing accuracy so we want lines to be exactly the way they're going to be the exact length they're going to be when they are constructed so very useful this way okay the next thing we're going to look at is if you want to draw a line at a very specific angle so there are a few different options you can do this in a few videos time we're going to look at the rotate command where we can actually get a line like this and rotate at a very specific angle but you can also actually just draw a line at an angle so again show you now it's, these are all follow in the notes so please follow along so click on the line command and you can so you click on it there so click on the line command click anywhere on the screen so say if you want to so we specified our start point now we can do a different thing so if we want to actually draw at a certain angle we can actually just put in the left angle bracket so it's basically shift and the left angle bracket you'll see it coming up here on this down here in the command line so that's our left angle bracket and then we can type in the angle so for example 45 so left angle bracket 45 and then we can kind of now you'll see our line is actually going to be drawn at that angle so if you're drawing something with different angles you can either draw it straight away and then rotate it or you can actually put in the angle here so there's a few different ways you can do it so once you've drawn the angle once you've once you finish drawing the angle line it'll actually default back to the flat horizontal line so again if you want to draw an angle again you can actually put in the left angle bracket and then your new angle so we'll put in so if you want to do minus 45 to go back down again so you see that'll go down like this so it's a nice nice handy way of actually just drawing an angle line instead of using the rotate command but we'll cover the rotate command in a few weeks so just hit enter to get rid of these to finish that and um, again we're going to just delete all these lines again so again just try it a different way we can just select them all individually hit delete this time just a bit of practice it's always good to practice the different commands as we go along okay so the next one we're going to look at is the coordinate method for drawing so we mentioned that before that autocad is kind of drawn and using x y coordinates and you should have these coordinates down here so i can just look at my mouse now we're actually very high so it's like nearly 3800 
by 1,511. So we're fairly high up. So the draw we're going to draw is actually going to be is going to be quite small. So if, if you'll see the, where the EC UCS is are originating from. You've got the green line going up here and the red line going here. These are X, Y coordinates. The closer you get down here, you'll see their coordinates are actually getting close to zero. So what we're going to do soon is actually going to be drawing very small drawing. So what you want to kind of go to this UCS and just kind of start zooming in. Use the wheel to zoom in till you see the mouse is kind of kind of roughly within a range of maybe 100 by 100. So now there is a thing we can do this easier for we can set drawing limits, but we'll do that some other day for another class or for another video. Sorry. So again, I'm going to be following the, this example in the notes. I'll just bring it on screen so you can see where we are. So on screen now, we're going to be drawing this little icon here, this little image here. So the drawings here are kind of each one of these endpoints of the line are at a very specific coordinate. So this is that point nine nine in the x y coordinates. This is point thirty five nine. So you can actually work at a distance of the lines. So if this is nine nine, this is thirty. This is nine nine. This is thirty five nine. The difference between the x values is thirty five minus nine, so it's twenty four. So this line is actually twenty four units long. And um, this one here, the x values are the same, but it's the y values that change. So it's seventeen and nine. So it's obviously difference of eight between these ones so we can go around like that but with the coordinate system all you have to do is actually start the line command and type in these coordinates and you'll be able to draw the shape without actually having to click on the screen or anything so i'll just move this over off screen so you can follow along so again open up the line command so specifying our first point so our first point is if you go back to the notes it was going to be nine comma nine so that's nine units up on the x-axis and nine units up in the y axis. So just nine nine, hit enter. And now you'll see that the line is actually originating from here. Actually, my ortho option is still on, so I'm just gonna turn it off for the moment. So press F8 again if you haven't do, just to turn the ortho option off. So you'll see it come up in the command line. So just, just make things a bit clearer. So the next point on our drawing is gonna be 35 comma nine. And then the next one is going to be 35 comma 17 hit enter now if you're drawing these lines and it's the lines actually going at an angle so when you did this second point and the line went up at an angle that probably means you've got it's actually using absolute coordinates so there's a, there is an option sorry let's escape by this if your line is going at an angle that means you need to just change an option here so see this little icon here dynamic input i've mine turned off if yours is on just click it so that'll turn it off once it's off that should fix the problem um, the reason that works is, and also you might notice when you're drawing the line, when, when you're putting in the coordinates, if there's a little at symbol, so I'll just type it here in the command line. If you have this little symbol on when you're putting the coordinates in, that means it's going to be absolute coordinates. But for this example, we want to get rid of that. So you can just backspace and get rid of that. Make sure there's no at symbol and make sure your dynamic input is turned off and then this should work. So I'll just continue the line. So I'm going to, this was my, was my final last point I did. So the next point after this was 33 comma 17. The next one after that was 33 comma 25. Next one after this is 25 comma 25. So and so on and so forth. I'll just finish it. It's nearly done now. Comma 20 comma 17. 14 comma 17. Hit enter. And then you can either type in the last quarter is actually the very first one. So you need to click on it. Or you can just type in 99, but I'm just going to click on it. So you'll see when you actually go to click on a point, see the little green box that's going around at the end of the line? That actually, that's a little kind of a, an object snap. We're going to look at object snaps in another video. But there's different object snap for different points of the line. Say if you want to snap onto different parts of the line. So when you go here, this, when you see a little triangle, that means you're going to snap onto the midpoint of the line. Um, and if you see a little square, that's going to be snapping onto the end point of the line. So I'm just going to click onto the end point. It just means that the lines are going to draw, are going to match up and connect together accurately. Otherwise, they might not connect. There might be a little gap, and that will just cause a lot more problems down the line. So just click in there, click enter. Okay, once I'm finished with the command line, just hit enter just to end it. So you should have this little shape. Again, this was exact same what we have in our notes. Again, we drew this only using the coordinate system, which was quite handy. So let's move that back off screen. So our next exercise, what I'm going to get you to do yourselves, and I'll sorry, bring it here on screen so you can see. So this is actually again using, I want to do these two little drawings. So this is rep reproduce the following using the coordinate input system, using the coordinate details in the box below. So again, this the exact same exercise we just did there a second ago, but you're going to be using these coordinates. So the coordinates for A is 100, 100, then this one is going to be 100, 
105, 100. So it's basically type, activate the line command and just start typing in 100, 100. You, don't, you shouldn't have to activate the line anymore unless you cancel it by accident. So just type in all these coordinates and you should go around and have a nice shape like this. So it's very handy. Again, you can just draw in a whole complex shape without actually using the keyboard or any other commands. It's very handy. Um, the second thing I want to do is actually reproduce the same image again using the length input method. So again, because we're not using the coordinates, you can just go beside the drawing. So you can I'll just put this here now. I'll show you now in a second. So you can put, you can draw, let's go on the screen here across the side open windows so you can draw this using the coordinates since this will probably appear somewhere here on the screen that's exercise number one so exercise number two is drawing the same image, image again using a length input option so again this is us act activating the line command but this one doesn't matter where you start from because we're not using coordinates so you can click on this in a, in a clear space on your drawing so that's going to be your drawing a so you see on the image here we actually have the dimensions of each line so the dimension of this line is five units long then it's two up then four across, two up, four across, two up, and four across, and so on and so forth. Um, so all you have to do is basically click the line command, point the line in the direction you want it to go, and just type the number and hit enter. Again, for this example, when you're doing the length input method, it's very important then you should, just because all the lines are perfectly horizontal and perfectly vertical, you want to activate the ortho command. So press F8 to turn ortho on, and then start to basically point the line in your this direction, and type five and hit enter and then that you'll have this line. So follow that, do the same thing the whole way around. You'll be able, you'll be able to reproduce this drawing again using just the direct, the distance input method. So again, we'll have the same shape drawn in two different ways. So again, it's good practice to show you the different ways how the line command works. And I'll just move this off screen one second. Okay, so once you've actually got those two exercises drawn, once those two exercises drawn, you're not being marked in them, these are just for your own, ex these, these are just for your own practice drawings. Um, but it's always good just to show you practice how to save things. So again, if you're in the college, we could actually, or if you're in the university, we could actually save this onto our Z drive. Each student has their own personal drive, a DHE server. But I don't. If you're work from home, you want this. So what you want to do is just save it. So click on the big A up here, and click Save As. So what I want you to draw is basically find find a folder yourself if you want. So I'd say create a new folder in your documents. It's actually even more important. I'd say what it, what I recommend do is actually go to your OneDrive. You should, if you have a student account, you should have a OneDrive account. So you can install OneDrive. So this is my own personal OneDrive. So what I would like you to do then is create a new folder called, you know, AutoCAD. Once that's saved, then you can actually go in here. And then again, we're saving the file type. So for the name, you can call this, again, we just call it something useful so you'll remember, lecture one exercises. So this means that when you go back, you'll actually you see this file, you know exactly what it actually is. So just click save and that'll be saved here. One thing then you'll notice actually when you're using the drawing that's saved onto your computer, the actual the path of where it actually is saved is shown along here. So mine's obviously in my OneDrive account. So if you're ever not sure where your drawing is, that if you're working on drawing you can't find it basically go up into your top menu top bar here and you'll be able to see exactly where it has been saved and um, okay there was a good bit in that that went on slightly longer than i was planning so okay so any questions send me an email the next video we're going to look at some other basic commands and there'll be some more exercises um but yeah so any issues just let me know and i'll see you in the next video thank you